Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, bringing you another video today on dollar Japanese yen. And it's we're at a crucial point. I want to quickly discuss where the market may be heading and the reason why we've had the gigantic rally from the 110 level and we're just sort of crossing back into 150. Now let's jump straight into it. I'm just freestyling, spitballing here with my phone while I'm at work and I want to talk really about where this market's heading. Now, first thing to know is that we're at the cheapest, you know, level um, since a multi really multi-decade low since October 2022. Now that we've come back once again to that level, you can see there we're just going back to where we were pretty much this time last year. Now, one of the interesting things is that um, the Bank of Japan really can no longer ignore the risk um, of excessive currency weakness and we're having a lot of um, price instability at the moment. So let's drill in deeper and understand how can we stop the bleeding, so to speak, and when will there be a reversal trade? I've been a buyer of dollar yen since 110 personally, so it's been a long trade for us. Um, and we're looking at, particularly at the moment, um, heavy buying of uh, Japanese government bonds. Um, but what's really on the horizon is whether the Bank of Japan will decide to abandon the 10-year government bond yield target that they've got their eyes on. Obviously, the easing at the moment is not is far from being done. And, uh, you know, negative interest rate um, practices that we're seeing and, bond, and the heavy bond purchases seem to be, for now at least, here to stay. Um, and if we go back to the tone of the last meeting that we had, I was actually surprised to hear a lot of positive comments, in particular about um, wage growth and price trends. You know, one of the, the comments that really stood out to me was J Japan is gradually transitioning to a world in which overall inflation expectations are rising and in a sense and price norms are changing. So the big question or the big takeaway is whether the the Japanese corporations actually have the excess funds to begin to raise wages in 2024. And that's yet to be to be decided. Um, you know, whether we get a bigger inflationary environment, um, it could actually be positive for Japan, you know, given how much of a beating the currency has taken so far. Um, and you need to be starting to position for this well in advance, like we've been from this 110 level. Um, but of course, the, the real risk is of further decline in the Japanese yen. And what that is likely to do in terms of, you know, encouraging the Bank of Japan to move ahead with more policy revisions. And for those that don't know, just remember that the bank actually cited the, the volatility in the FX rates um, and various Japanese markets is one reason why it's adopted this so-called flexible approach to yield, cur uh, yield curve control. And we saw that being addressed in July's meeting um, at the midway point through the year. So there's a lot of different tones that we're seeing that we've got to decide on what that means for, for the yen. And of course, keep in mind, although that the, the nominal interest rate differentials that we see are not the only factor for determining where FX rates are going to head. You know, particularly at the minute, we're seeing that the, the size of the spread between, you know, um, the US and the Japanese interest rates has um, basically reassured dollar buyers and yen sellers in very simple terms. So this cheap yen is really positive for, you know, the likes of exporter earnings, but it also increases outflows, um, you know, for the domestic currency, um, you know, with rising costs of imports and things like that. So when it comes to any monetary policy, price stability is always the target or the central goal. And if you get these excessive fluctuations in exchange rates, then of course this upsets the whole show. And that's what we've really seen. So looking ahead, you know, the short term policy rates and the Bank of Japan, the Bank of Japan has a three tiered um, rate that we're seeing banking system that is quite unusual. And, um, you know, when the way that they structure their negative interest rate policy 
is going to be interesting to see when it's wound down, so to speak. Where you'll make the money as a currency trader is betting on what happens next. That's where the real profits will be made. Now, if you think about, you know, policy rates at the minute, minus 0.1% rate is paid on the, on the policy. Um, let's just keep an eye on this and see, and see where this goes. Um, and I've talked a little bit about, um, you know, the macro balances earnings, the, the policy rate balances, what they're earning. And it'll be just interesting to see if bond purchases begin to taper. And also keep in mind, the, a lot of the big bond purchases that we've seen coming out of the Bank of Japan, it's essentially produced a large pool of excess reserves that were earning a rate of, you know, 0.1%. So that was prior to the negative interest rates. So corporate earnings are going to take a hit if that rate had been made to zero or negative, like you'd see in a two-tier structure or system. Um, and any end to negative rates would obviously reduce the need for this three-tier system. So that's just me talking a little bit about dolly yen and the massive move that we've seen. Of course, you cannot, you know, not talk about the fact that we've had this super cycle, this bull run in commodities. Japan are having very little in the way of physical commodities to um, export. They've been hit hard by, you know, crude going up, natural gas, and that's really affected their current account balance. So there's a whole sort of, you know, multiple dynamics in play here that have greatly affected um, the yen. And it's one of the big reasons why we've had this gigantic sell off. I'll be doing more videos on dollar yen as we move above this 150 level. And I'll eventually be talking about our short position, but at the moment, we're, we're far from that.